Recorded Books and RB Digital present The Girl Who Drew Butterflies How Maria Marion's Art Changed Science by Joyce Sidman Read by Catherine Ho Butterfly Glossary A Compendium of Insect Words Used Throughout This Book Adult The Final Winged Stage of Growth in Butterflies and Moths at the time Maria lived in Germany, adult butterflies were called summer birds. Caterpillar, the larval stage of a butterfly or moth. Chrysalis, a hard case that protects a moth or butterfly at the pupa stage of growth. Cocoon, a covering, often made of their own silk, which moth caterpillars and some other insects make around themselves for protection while in the pupa stage. Eclose, to emerge from the hard case of the chrysalis as an adult butterfly or moth. Egg, the small rounded reproductive body produced by an insect or other animal. Maria sometimes also referred to insect eggs as seeds. Instar, a phase of caterpillar growth between two periods of shedding skin or molting. Larva, the immature worm-like form, caterpillar, that hatches from the egg of a butterfly or moth, grows through several instars, and is transformed into a pupa from which the adult emerges. Metamorphosis, a series of major changes in form or structure that occur as an insect becomes an adult. For butterflies and moths, which undergo complete metamorphosis, the stages are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Incomplete metamorphosis, which occurs in many other insects, consists of an egg, a nymph, and an adult. Molting, the shedding of an old, too small layer of skin. Nymph, scientific name for the immature form of insects that undergo only partial metamorphosis. A nymph often looks like a smaller or less developed version of the adult. Parasitism a relationship in which one organism, the parasite, lives on or within the body of another, the host, gaining nutrients or shelter and often harming the host in the process. Pupa, plural, pupae, scientific name for the stage of development between larva and adult in insects undergoing full metamorphosis. Maria called some kinds of pupae date pits because to her, that's what they looked like, also called a chrysalis. The Girl in the Garden A girl kneels in her garden. It is 1660 and she has just turned 13, too old for a proper German girl to be crouching in the dirt, according to her mother. She is searching for something she discovered days ago in the chilly spring air. As she combs the emerald bushes, she looks for other telltale signs, eggs no bigger than pinpricks, or leaf edges scalloped by the jaws of an inching worm. Ah, she has found it, a crinkled brown cocoon anchored on a branch like a sailor's hammock. She inspects its crumpled surface. Any change since yesterday? Any sign of life within? No, not yet. Her neighbors despise the creatures that fascinate her. They believe that all flying, creeping things are pests, born of filth and decay. If any of them spotted this swaddled cocoon, they would rip it off and crush the vermin within, giving no thought to what it might become. But for years she has gathered flowers for her stepfather's studio, carried them in, and arranged them for his still-life paintings. She has studied the creatures that ride on their petals, the soft green bodies of caterpillars, the shiny armor of beetles, the delicate wings of moths. She has looked at them closely, sketched and painted them. In learning the skills of an artist, she has learned to look and watch and wonder. Imagine this girl, forbidden from training as either a scholar or a master artist because she is female. Aware that in nearby villages, women have been hanged as witches for something as simple as showing too much interest in evil vermin. Yet she is drawn to these small, mysterious lives. She does not believe the local lore that summer birds or butterflies creep out from under the earth. She thinks there is a connection between butterflies, moths, caterpillars, and the rumpled brown cocoon before her, and she is determined to find it. This is her story. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?